There is perhaps no airbase in the world more well known than Area 51, which is most impressive given that nobody actually knows anything about what goes on behind the gates. But of course, all secrets must be revealed sooner or later. From a viral Facebook festival to a man who spills the secrets, here are 15 times Area 51 was exposed to the public. Before we begin, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. With that being said, let's begin. <sighs> Number 15. Storm Area 51 As probably one of the only Facebook events that generated more enthusiasm than a simple, eh, I guess. The Storm Area 51 event likely did more to get people to the gates of Area 51 than any other incident in history. Of course, that doesn't mean that the United States Air Force was particularly thrilled about the two million people who responded to the initially comedic event. While the original creator of the event disowned it after the media mayhem, the more serious believers quickly adopted the cause in the hopes of seeing what lay beyond the gates. They soon adopted the slogan, they can't stop us all, but as we all know, they'd sure as hell try. Spokespeople for the Air Force gave public statements, dissuading potential attendees from going through with the event, warning of possible consequences for doing so. Still, on September the 19th, 2019, people began gathering outside the airbase in preparation for the planned raid. By the end of what was later known as the festivals, around 1,500 gathered near the gates. Of those 1,500, three were arrested for various crimes, one of which was for peeing, of course, and only one had the nerve to cross the boundary. Still, this event may hold the record for the most people visiting Area 51 and definitely holds the record for most people arrested for peeing at the airbase. Time for the rare topic. Despite Area 51 being something of a tourist hotspot, the United States Air Force doesn't particularly like photos being taken outside. That means that most of the images coming from the base tend to be pretty hard to see or, more often than not, kind of boring to look at. Compare that to this image, which we received from one of our viewers, which depicts pretty clear skeletal octopus type things floating above the base. The story goes that a tourist at Area 51 was exploring the outskirts of the base when he heard a mysterious wailing. Upon following the noise, he happened to see these strange skeletal creatures flying in circles over the base. Given the bizarre nature of goings on at Area 51, is it possible that these are part of an ongoing experiment or could the whole thing be just another hoax? As always, comment down below with the hashtag, hashtag rear topic, and we might pin the comment that best explains what's been shown on this image. With that said, let's keep things Things moving. Number 14. Jim Goodall. If there were ever to be a designated expert on the mysterious goings on at Area 51, James Goodall would likely be a strong candidate for the role. Having spent a significant portion of his days hanging around outside of Area 51 and Area 52, Jim is well known as a member of the Interceptors, a group of UFO enthusiasts who quietly exchanged information about the classified activities and technology within. Nowadays, that group would likely exist on Reddit or the comments section of popular newspapers. But back in the pre-internet days, these guys used to gather outside the base to swap their intel. Talk about courage! In the 1980s, Jim was one of several enthusiasts who encouraged public speculation on secret alien technology held inside Area 51, all based on tips he got from insiders. While Jim has long been understanding of the Pentagon's insistence that the base retains its secrets, he's always been a strong advocate of transparency when it comes to how the public's tax dollars are used. Having spent much of his life openly discussing the secrets of America's most secret base, Jim now publicly advocates for young people to pick up the baton and continue demanding the truth. There's certainly no doubt about one thing, nobody has publicly exposed the alleged secrets of Area 51 like Jim. Number 13. The Dutch YouTubers If there's anything to be said for these guys, it's their dedication to providing a quality piece of entertainment. Two young Dutchmen were arrested by US security forces as they attempted to capture footage of Area 51 for their YouTube channel. Despite proving that they could read, speak and write English, the two men opted to ignore the no trespassing signs in the hopes that they could somehow evade the highly trained United States Air Force. Surprisingly, things didn't quite work out in their favor. Authorities found various cameras in their car, including a phone, a laptop, and a drone, which I think we can all agree would have made a very cinematic and likely very entertaining video. Unfortunately, they got arrested, so we'll never know just how cinematic that could have been. Despite insisting that they were not intending to cause trouble, the pair unknowingly visited on a date shortly ahead of the impending Raid Area 51 event, leading police to believe they were planning to storm the place as part of the melee. 
Still, their protests and claims of innocence ultimately didn't go down well and the pair were sentenced to a year in the Nevada County Jail. Still, I bet the video will be good. Number 12. Google Maps Google Maps has long been praised as a way to see the world from a whole new angle. Actually, I have no idea if that's true, but it sounded like a pretty good tagline. Anyway, when it comes to Area 51, Google Earth was largely unhelpful for quite a long time. Until 2018, aerial photographs of the base were censored on the site, preventing anybody from getting even a half-decent glimpse at the layout of the base. Obviously, the official line is that the base contains top-secret military installations that must be kept away from prying eyes. But theories online are, as expected, more dramatic. Maybe they were just worried someone would build a replica on Minecraft. In 2018, the United States Air Force made the surprising decision to stop the Google Maps censoring of Area 51. For whatever reason, they've now concluded that it's perfectly fine to allow the public an aerial glimpse at the base. Of course, many people have now taken this as a challenge to find paranormal or extraterrestrial phenomena around the base, and some have succeeded in locating odd orbs or items. Of course, while none of this is confirmed, the sheer fact that the airbase can now be viewed on the site marks a significant shift from the long-term insistence on secrecy. How intriguing. Number 11. John Morris It's a typical vacation tale. During a cross-country trip to America's west coast, photographer John Morris took the opportunity to experience everything on offer from the coast. He went to Niagara Falls to get a photo of the waterfalls. He visited Hollywood for a photo of the famous sign. And he went to Area 51 for, well, because he could, of course. John never actually got close to getting inside the base, but noted that things immediately felt off when he approached the gate. John later said that you could disappear overnight and no one would ever know. Of course, you can also get arrested for peeing and everyone will know, so it's generally quite a weird place. Weirded out by his odd trip to Area 51, John followed up his visit with a trip to a local alien cafe. But to his surprise, he found this to be an even more bizarre experience than his brief trip to the base. Attempting to speak with the locals, John found them weirdly tight-lipped about the whole Area 51 phenomenon, with many refusing even to discuss it. Of course, this raises one crucial question. Why run an alien-themed cafe if you have no desire ever to discuss why you're running an alien-themed cafe? Number 10. Carl Rorkatis Carl Rorkatis' experience of the airbase was definitely very different from that of John Morris. On a 2014 road trip from Boston to the West Coast, a serviceman gave Rorkatis directions to what he claimed was a service entrance of Area 51. But upon his arrival at the destination, three military men approached the terrified Rorkatis in his car with their guns drawn and immediately began searching his vehicle. Of course, the guards found absolutely nothing but insisted on taking his license plate number before instructing him to leave. For some reason, I doubt they were hoping to send him a Christmas card. During his visit, Rorkatis saw nothing of the base beyond some flickering lights and one or two buildings in the distance. While he was initially curious about what could be going on behind the gate, he was far too scared of the guards even to consider taking a closer look. When he finally returned home, Rorkatis strongly advised anyone and everyone against visiting Area 51. But perhaps more importantly, he fully warned against raising it. Of course, nobody took any notice of him or there wouldn't have been a P-based arrest. Number 9. T.D. Barnes Claiming to be a former employee of Area 51 in a special projects organization, Thornton D. Barnes has long offered a more rational take on the suggestion of aliens at the base. Opening up about his experience at the base, Barnes has long insisted that not only has Area 51 never held aliens, but none of his colleagues in the military service has ever claimed to have even seen an alien spacecraft in all their years of experience. Barnes paints picture of Area 51 that is, to put it simple, ordinary. Not quite middle-aged woman shopping for milk average, obviously, but a far cry from aliens and extraterrestrial technology, Barnes has frequently explained that Area 51 is nothing more than a remote, rectangular, no-fly area and a military training area used by the United States Air Force Warfare Center at Nellis Air Force Base. This is pretty much the core line of Barnes's continuing arguments, exposing what many would consider to be an ordinary workplace. But of course, this kind of rational explanation only really tends to work for those who are already convinced there's nothing going on. For those already suspicious, this is nothing more than a cover-up. Which side of the argument are you guys on? Let us know in the comments below. Number 8. Area 51 Vets Much like T.D. Barnes, 
The no aliens never was argument is one frequently repeated by fellow veterans of Area 51, with some elaborating on the work they were personally involved in and, sadly for some it sounds like, yet another example of ordinary work. The men have openly discussed their work on the Oxcart program, developing a Mach 3 aircraft capable of flying three times the speed of sound. They claim that projects like this are the whole reason that Area 51 is so secret, rather than anything to do with aliens. Area 51 is so secret to protect the in-development military aircraft from the prying eyes of potential foreign spies. That's their story and they're sticking to it. With over 2,800 test flights launched on the Oxcart project, the veterans have long hoped that this rational explanation will put an end to the seemingly constant alien rumors. Unfortunately, they're going to be disappointed. This list alone features a heck of a lot of alien or extraterrestrial stories and very few paperwork and supersonic plane stories. Still, the veterans have also divulged that the shape of the ox cart was unprecedented, describing its titanium body moving as fast as a bullet would reflect the sun's rays in a way that could make anyone think UFO. All of this does suggest that Area 51 may simply be an airbase as opposed to some top secret alien warehouse, which means it's time for another alien story. Number 7. Dan Burrish of course, not all veterans follow the secret military plane story. In fact, one tells a wildly different tale of what occurs behind those notorious gates. In 1986, university professor and microbiologist Dan Burrish was reportedly recruited by the government of the United States to work on a top secret project. That project was working on something prison related in a government office. Yeah, kind of a letdown compared to what you expected, right? But after working on several other weird projects, Dan was called up to the big time in 1994. Taken to a secret underground location known as Century 4, Dan discovered the truth behind Area 51. It was a base holding ships and extraterrestrial beings obtained by the United States government. Remember that quaint old ox cart story? Me either. While working on the aquarium project, Dan began to learn more about the beings known as Orions, which hailed from the star system Z Reticuli. It somehow manages to get a little crazier from here. Dan went on to discover that President Eisenhower had signed an agreement with the Orions that allowed for experimentation on the extraterrestrial beings that were held at the base. Dan's story is so incredibly detailed that it can only be the truth or an incredible work of fiction dreamt up by a genius mind. While we don't have the time to explore it in detail, the full story is available on the internet. Full warning though, there are few explanations as to what any of it really means, so you'll probably end up knowing less than you did at the beginning. Number 6. The Hamilton's Abduction If you were an alien, planning to abduct a human for whatever purpose, where would be your first resource? I personally would go for a shopping mall, but according to ufologist Bill Hamilton and his wife, aliens abducted them near to Area 51 itself. Kind of an uninspired place to do it, but I guess creative thought hasn't quite reached their star system just yet. In 1993, Hamilton's claim of being abducted by an alien named Quaylar was nothing short of, mm, well, odd. Bill described your stereotypical six-foot-tall grey alien with big black slanting shields for eyes and an egg-shaped head. Again, I wish the story were a little more creative, but I recognize that this is an extraordinary circumstance. In his story, Bill describes a detailed and bizarre encounter in which the very gentle Quaylar helped Bill get in touch with his inner thoughts, emotions and physiology before returning him to Earth. To this day, Bill insists that his story was a true event but has obviously been unable to provide evidence verifying it. Still, if this story is true, this counts as quite a significant expose on the nature of what happens around Area 51. And if Quaylar is real, well, I hope he sees this video and selects a more creative place to abduct humans. Number 5. Larry King Live Television can reach millions of people all around the world and even Area 51 hasn't been able to avoid the glare of live television. On October the 1st, 1994, Larry King took his popular CNN show for a two-hour special outside of Area 51. Setting up his desk just a short walk away from the gates, Larry sat and hosted the entire event. Guests for the event featured Glenn Campbell, Stephen Greer and Stanton Friedman, though viewers were likely hoping for an extraterrestrial guest to pop by too. Sadly, the show didn't manage to secure any unusual phenomena and there isn't much to talk about. But this was likely the first time Americans had seen Area 51 live as opposed to archive photos or alleged UFO sightings. For that reason alone, it's a pretty notable public exposure. Would have been great to see Larry King interview an alien though. Number 4. 
tourists on location. On the topic of alleged UFO sightings, it goes without saying that many tourists flock to Area 51 hoping to snap some special UFO photos. There have been just as many UFO sightings outside of Area 51 as anywhere else in the world, though these photos tend to be scrutinized more heavily than other locations due to what I describe as the convenience of the coincidence. Basically, that's a way to describe the sheer unlikeliness of aliens happening to fly over on the one day someone decided to visit. What are the chances? For that reason, it's difficult to trust UFO photos that come from Area 51. With modern technology, it's easier than ever to doctor or Photoshop a UFO sighting. However, tourists take more photos of Area 51 than government officials, meaning that Area 51 has been exposed by vacation photos more than anything else. Thank you, tourists. Number 3. Majestic 12 A popular conspiracy theory among ufologists. Majestic 12 is the alleged code name for a secret committee of scientists, military and government officials, allegedly formed by a 1947 executive order as signed by President Harry S. Truman. Majestic 12's purpose is to aid in the recovery and investigation of alien spacecraft. The FBI debunked the whole theory as bogus and dismissed the supposedly leaked government documents that inspired it. Still, it's a theory that many ufologists continue to believe, and it's worth a little unpacking. The leaked documents were released in the 1980s, during a time when many conspiracy theories began to suspect that the government had covered up the Roswell incident. These documents that claimed the government had recovered alien technology which they hoped to exploit as well as openly discussed the Roswell cover-up were exactly the kind of proof the conspiracy theories were looking for. But as the documents were widely dismissed, some took extreme measures to confirm their authenticity. A man named Richard Dotty claimed to be somehow connected to the United States Air Force of Special Investigations before showing a filmmaker yet more unspecified documents, allegedly confirming the existence of little grey aliens. After promising footage of the creatures, Dotty mysteriously vanished. I personally have my suspicions that he had nothing to do with the Air Force at all, but I could be wrong. Number 2. Robert Lazar If there's any key information to be plucked from the stories of Area 51's ex-employees, it's that the 1980s were either a goldmine of alien activity or one of the most mundane periods in American military history. Well, Robert Lazar is firmly in the first camp. Lazar has claimed that he was hired to work at the Nellis Air Force Base, then known as S-4, a secondary base, not far from Area 51. Lazar's primary job in the base was to reverse engineer alleged extraterrestrial technology for use in American technology. His biggest claim is that he witnessed and examined an alien spacecraft powered by Element 115, now known as Moscovium, but at the time an unsynthesized element. Even if you're a skeptic, that's a bit of a tough detail to dismiss. Lazar's other claims include his discovery of government documents that describe in detail the involvement of alien life forms throughout human history, effectively suggesting that much of what we know to be our world is not in fact entirely our world. It goes without saying that Bob's story has been dissected and refuted by skeptics and ufologists ever since he first made the claim. In fact, many Many researchers and scientists note that Lazar never actually worked at Nellis Air Force Base nor does he hold the degrees that he claims. Lazar's story continues to fascinate enthusiasts and it's easy to see why. The amount of detail sticks in the mind like Element 115 in an alien spacecraft. Number 1 Sergeant Wayne Anderson The story of Sergeant Wayne Anderson is an odd one, primarily because there's very little about it available on the internet. The story goes that on June 17, 1959, Sergeant Wayne Anderson of the local sheriff's office contacted the Reno Evening Gazette, claiming to have been one of many to spot an object bright green in color and descending toward the earth at a speed too great to be an airplane. The headline read, More Flying Objects Seen in Clark Sky, and the article itself noted that this was the third report of UFO sightings in the area within three weeks. What happened next is largely unknown, and the internet trail goes cold after those details. Who was Sergeant Wayne Anderson, and what happened to him after he reported this stuff? If you know the answers to any of this, please let us know in the comments below. So who do you believe? Is Area 51 just another airbase or a hotbed of alien conspiracy? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.